Hey, hey, welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week, we're going to talk just a little bit more about ringing out your microphones. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So a few weeks ago, we did a video on how to ring out your microphone. Um, and this was really about how to uh, ring out a pastor's headset microphone, uh, an omnidirectional microphone that is um, really prone to feedback in a live environment. Um, and so this week we wanted to just kind of clarify a few things. We've gotten some really good feedback, some really good questions from people um, over these past couple weeks. And um, just want to kind of explain a little bit further on what we did in that video and then also give you a few more techniques that will be a little bit broader for um, other microphones than just a headset. Um, so one, uh, if you saw that video, um, hopefully you weren't confused by the fact that we were using a, um, a dynamic microphone, a Shure SM58, um, near a studio monitor. Um, it was really just to show the concept um, more than a rule. Um, so that is something that I would typically use on, again, uh, a headset microphone because those are very prone to feedback, um, but I wouldn't necessarily use it on just any microphone. So one thing that we did not talk about uh, in that context, um, we, we showed how to use the EQ, um, but we didn't show uh, how to actually apply the EQ. Um, so before we move on to anything else in this video, I'm going to show you really quickly how to do that. Again, we're using the X32 today. Um, I'm going to be using the X32 uh, editing app uh, just to make things a little bit easier visually for what we're doing. Um, but the same concepts are going to apply if you're using an actual X32 or if you're using a different digital board like an Allen Heath or a Yamaha or whatever. Um, these concepts are going to apply to pretty much everything, um, but we're using X32 just since most churches tend to have those nowadays. Um, so this is a, a, a real basic setup we have on here. We have a headset microphone um, going um, that uh, we are going to apply some EQ to. Uh, and then this is totally theoretical today, so we're not going to do any audio examples, just so you're aware. Um, there's two different ways you can apply the 31 band EQ. Uh, we're going to start by going to the actual effect. So we're going to click on the effects tab. And then here's uh, our racks. Um, you can see nothing's really being used over on this right side yet. So we're going to use this first rack here, um, the left side of it, because it's a dual rack. Um, to apply to that channel. So if I look down here, I can see that my headset is in channel one. So I'm going to go up here and select channel one. If you're using an actual 31, or sorry, an actual X32, um, you're going to have the same options. They'll just be knobs and buttons that will show up down here. Um, now that it says channel 31, it is applied to that channel, but it won't make any effect until we insert it. So I'm going to click insert. And again, you'd have a button down here that would say insert that would allow you to do the same thing on an actual board. So this is how you would apply that EQ um, from the EQ page. Now I'm going to turn this off real quick. And I'm going to show you how to do it from the actual channel. So we've got headset selected. We're going to click on our home tab up here. So we can see all the information for that channel. And we're going to go to our config tab. And from here, we can select where our insert point is. Um, so we're going to say the same channel. We're going to do the uh, uh, effects left, effects five left. And again, this won't do anything until you hit the insert button. Now that would be applied. Now, the good and bad thing about doing it this way is that that EQ is now set on pretty much everything that microphone is touching. So that 31 band EQ will affect the sound of that microphone in the mains the monitors, anything that you're sending it to. Let's say for the next example that we have um, a microphone or a group of microphones that sound fine in the house, but in the stage monitors, they're uh, causing feedback. So over here, we have uh, four different uh, handheld microphones. Uh, and this example would be as if you had a small praise team that was using a live stage wedge. Um, but it sounds fine in the house, but when you try and get them loud enough to hear themselves on stage, that's when you start to run into feedback. 
So in this case, we want not to apply EQ to the individual channels. We'll do that for tonal shaping, um, but we want to apply an EQ to the monitor send. So over here we have a monitor that they'd be going to, and what we're going to do is apply an EQ to here. Now, if we were in the analog world, uh, I would apply a 31 band EQ to this monitor mix. And the reason being that most analog consoles that your church is going to run into aren't going to have an EQ on the buses. They're only going to have EQs on individual input channels. Um, and so you really have to run everything through a 31 band EQ to have uh, EQ on those mixes. However, we're using a digital board today, and so we've got a lot more options available to us. So you could use a 31 band EQ, but it would honestly be overkill in this case. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna look at our uh, six band uh, bus EQ. So I selected my bus, and then over here I can go to my EQ tab, and then just like we did in the, uh, the start of our other video, we would go through, turn on our EQ, we would, um, point a microphone either at or near the monitors, try and get it to feed back, and once we find those feedback frequencies, we would cut those out. I'd probably also go through and put a, uh, a low cut down here, and there's probably gonna be some feedback up in your top end, depending on your mics and your monitors. Um, but once you've done that, uh, you should be able to get those microphones louder for them to hear with, again, less feedback to run into. Third technique would be if you have uh, a microphone, or in this case a group of microphones, that you want to EQ for the front of house mix, um, but you don't want to have to apply an EQ to each one of them. Um, so just like with the headset e uh, microphone, we want to use our channel EQs to make the tonal shaping um, for each vocal, but we want an EQ in the background that's just going to help uh, weed out any frequency problems with feedback. Um, and so a good example of this would be if you have multiple uh, MC microphones, or your church might call them announcement microphones, um, but a handheld that someone should be holding up close to their face so they get good uh, signal to noise ratio, but inevitably you always get that one person who lets it slide down, and then when you turn up the fader, you start running into feedback issues. So you want to be able to make that microphone nice and loud and not have feedback. But if you have, in this case, We've got three microphones set up. If you don't want to have to apply an EQ to each one of those using up three of your racks, um, then you could send these, if you have enough buses, you can send these three channels to a bus. So I've got an MC bus set up down here and apply EQ to that. Um, so I'm going to show you really quickly how to set that up. Uh, we want this to be a post fade mix. And that means that um, these faders will still affect the volume. Um, but they're affecting the volume going to the mix. Uh, so to do that, we're going to select our MC mix here. We're going to go to the config tab for that mix, and we're going to tell it to be post-fade. So right now, everything going to that mix is going to be post-fade. Uh, so now, and do keep in mind too, the way the X32 works, that would mean that uh, bus 7 would have to be post-fade as well. So just keep that in mind when you decide what bus is going to be what. Um, everything is in groups of two in your buses. So quick note for you on that. So we've got a post-fade mix on here now. Um, let's, uh, let's do sends on fader and make sure that these three microphones are in there at the same level. We're going to do about unity gain. Great. And next thing is right now what would be happening is um, these three would be sending to the left right mix, our main mix over here, and they'd be sending to this MC mix, which is really not going anywhere yet. What we want to do is we want to make this be the main hub before it goes to the left right. So we're going to take each of these, and if you're looking at the actual console, um, this the button you'd be looking for is just to the left of the screen. Um, it would say stereo bus. Uh, on here on the editing app, it's this button here that says LR for left, right. We're going to click that and remove it from each of these three mics. But what that does is it says that the, um, the microphone is no longer going out of the, uh, going straight to the left, right mix, um, though it is going to our MC mix. 
Now we're gonna tell our MC mix, because it defaults to, to being like a stage monitor, we're gonna tell that to go to the left to right mix. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating a extra stop on the way out to your speakers. So each of these microphones is going to come from the fader, go to this MC mix that we can apply processing to, and then from the MC mix, it's going to go to our main left to right mix. Now that we've done that, we can apply EQ as we see fit. Um, so you can do just like we did with that headset microphone and, uh, and apply a 31 band EQ, or if you can get away with a six band EQ, always start with that so that you can use up less processing. Um, but if you're in a big echoey room, 31 band EQ might be your best bet. So again, to do that, just like we did before, we go to our effects tab, find an open effect. So right now the second half of this, uh, this EQ that we used earlier is open. And just like before, we're gonna go and we're gonna find, in this case, bus eight. Select that. And again, it won't do anything until you hit insert. So we're gonna hit insert on here. And now you've got a 31 band EQ that will only affect the, uh, the main output for these three microphones here. Real quick recap. Um, the three techniques we talked about today, you can apply a EQ to an individual channel. Um, in this case, a 31 band EQ, if you have feedback issues, really the only times you're gonna use this on, are on things that are really prone to feedback, like an omnidirectional headset microphone. Um, that's gonna be the main time you use this. Uh, we can also apply a either six band EQ if we're in the digital world, or 31 band EQ in the analog world, to a monitor mix so that we can just clean up just that mix but not affect everything else that's coming out to the house. Or the third option we talked about today is to send a group of microphones to a bus and apply processing to that bus. Um, so again, this would be as if you had three handheld mics that are prone to feedback because maybe people are walking around the room with them for interviews or maybe uh, it's, they just have poor mic technique. This would be a great way to apply a blanket EQ to all those um, channels right away. So I hope this has been helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and that you subscribe so you can get more content. Um, and please feel free to leave comments below in our YouTube page, or you can email me directly at techtuesday at ascensionworship.com. We do very much appreciate your feedback, and that's what helps to, uh, to create new episodes. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.